afternoon, Mark. Hope you're well. You too, mate. Always a pleasure to do stuff with Everton. <laughs> the two clubs aren't aren't having a pleasurable time doing stuff at the moment. I mean, come on, give me give me your opinion. I've been seeing a lot from Manchester United fans moaning about the price that Everton want for Jared Brantwaite. So, why do you? Why have you got an issue with what Everton are asking for, Jared Brantwaite? Um, well, are we, we going to agree? What is it Everton looking for, first of all? Because I've heard 70, 80 million. Yeah, I Everton. Mean, well, you I think that's right. I, well, I, yeah, in today's market, I think that's probably for someone who's got the ceiling that he's got. Because he is, he is going to be a top, top defender. I mean, he's already an excellent defender and his numbers prove that. But he, I personally believe his ceiling's massive. Uh, and yeah. I think he's only going to develop. So. Therefore, I think Everton are looking, if you believe everything, Everton are looking for £70, £80 million pound for him. And he's only 21. He should be in the England squad, but that's a different yeah. conversation. So why have you got such an issue with that number? No, it's interesting because I think I was want to come at it from sort of a collective United thing because obviously yeah. at a United stand and there's different opinions. I think some people think he's not worth it. Like uh, some people genuinely think he's not worth the more than fifty million pounds. Okay. I personally really like him, but there are people in the United fan base who just don't think he's that good. Um, and I've heard the word Harry Maguire be mentioned. Now, look, we overpaid for Harry Maguire at eighty million mm. a few years ago, and probably messed up the market that Everton are now saying, "Well, if you paid that for that, then we want that for Branthwaite," which I understand. But I think from 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 my point of view, I like Branthwaite. I want him to come to Manchester United. I agree with you. I think he's going to be a really good player, and I've got no concerns about the quality of the player. Mm. From a price point of view, um, look, I think it, it comes down to just club bias, doesn't it? I don't want to spend 80, 70, 60 million pounds on Branthwaite because I know what our budget is, and we need to bring in about six or seven players. Yeah. On the other hand, Everton have got their own <laughs> corner to fight, and I understand that. So my stance is, look, Obviously, something's gone on somewhere because we agreed personal terms a few weeks ago. Well, you can't do that without Everton saying we're open to doing business. Mm. And obviously, Branthwaite would be open to coming to Man United, which is not problematic. I mean, it's normal for Everton if they can get a good fee to want, you know, to do a deal. But I think Man United cannot be held to ransom on this. I think they've got to go. We're not, you know, we, we are willing to walk away if we have to because the price is too much. Mm. Um, and I think. Fifty million pounds up front with add-ons is as high as I would go, uh, mm. because I just think we we can't be bent over like we were with Palace and Sporting Lisbon and Ajax and Dortmund and Leicester. I understand why Everton are doing it, but mm. from a Man United point of view, I just don't want to see us paying the money that Everton want if it is sixty, seventy million, because we've made so many mistakes doing that in the past. Yeah, I, I do understand that. It's just the fact that it's like if Everton offered... Well, how much do you think Kobe Minu's worth? So if Everton said, right, we want Kobe Minu, 35 million with add-ons, is that, yeah. would you think that was a fair price or do you value him? I think he's tremendous, by the way, but I'm just saying... Do you want... and I, think, yeah, I, you know, I think there's an arrogance to this and mm. you know there is a club rivalry and Everton fans will get annoyed and I understand the game and that's how it works. Mm. Um, but I've got to look out for what I think is best for my club and Everton fans have got to look out what's best for theirs. And if I was in that position, you know, and, and Everton came to me and said 35 million plus add-ons for Mainu, I'd mm. be like, you know, do you want? But <laughs> I also think that sometimes the media doesn't portray it that well because we were led to believe that Everton needed to sell Brandweight and want to sell Brandweight, and mm. then we're hearing well we don't need to sell him and if we're going to sell him it's big money so mm. i just think it's the normal transfer frustration that can lead to two clubs having a bit of back and forth in social media um look i really want Brandweight, yeah but i don't want to pay silly money and if man mm. united walk away from it i'd be really disappointed but there are other options out there that we could pivot towards who mm. i wouldn't say they're better but there are other options out there. But, you know, from an Everton point of view, I presume you you just want to keep him anyway. Absolutely. We want yeah. to keep him. I think if he's... Uh, the personal terms thing is neither here nor there. If someone comes to you and says, we'll give you more than three times what you're on it, you, I think most players are go, well, if I move, that's acceptable. I think that's all that's happened. I think his representatives have met people from United who've said it's reported 160 grand a week, whatever. He's on nowhere near that at Everton, so he will go, yeah, all right, if we leave, that would be acceptable. 
But I don't yeah, think and it's, it's normal, isn't it, for Everton? <laughs> it's not like when we got Van Persie from Arsenal and, you know, he's agreed personal terms and Arsenal fans are like, well, you can do one now, you've done that. Mm-hmm. Because from an Everton point of view, with all due respect, you know, you can sell to Man United for a profit and understand the deal and understand why the player wants to go. Um, Everton aren't where they want to be at the mm-hmm. moment in relation to being able to say, you know, he shouldn't even be considering Man United. No, so. I, think, I think we know where, I mean, Manchester United are far from where they need to be, obviously, mm-hmm. and, and both clubs are rebuilding. We're in, we're in a process of obviously going through a takeover. We know our financial uh, position isn't what we want it to be, but it is improving all the time. You're absolutely right. We we don't need to sell Jarrah Branthwaite now. Uh, ben Godfrey's about to sign for Atalanta, and that kind of sorts Everton's PSR out with, with the other sales. So there's no sort of opportunity of us being undercut now it is sort of a case of we value the player at 75 80 million i mean just back on the main new thing just for a minute he's played he's had 35 career games and scored five goals and jared brantwaite has got 115 career games and got nine goals so he is very experienced this isn't we're not talking about you know a kid who's played 15 games and being a flash in the pan for Everton so that's why he is rated so highly by Evertonians two footed six foot five and we will we will fight our corner because we you know we can I'm old enough I'm sure you are Mark to remember Wayne Rooney going in for a lot a lot less than what Wayne Rooney should have gone for to Manchester United I mean Everton had had a bid for 50 million for him and the player wanted to join United at the time and therefore he ended up paying just over half what we'd had from uh, from Chelsea. So, you know, we are very sensitive to that. But I think most Evertonians are kind of understand the club situation. We'll go, well, if Manchester United offered 70 million for Jared Brantwaite, then he will probably go because that's too good a deal for Everton to turn down. But I think the club is comfortable that he would remain at Everton for another year. And I think the player's comfortable with that as well because I think he knows he's going right to the very top. And whether it's this summer or whether it's next summer, I think if he waits and has another solid season, it won't be Manchester United they were banging on the door. It'll be other clubs as well. United may well still be there because they like him. But yeah, I think, it's interesting you know, that you say that because I yeah. think that the, the, the advantage United have got this summer is that the market's not really there for yeah. other clubs to go for Brantwaite. But yeah. Look, I, I'm, like I say, there are some United fans out there that don't want to pay the money because they don't think he's worth it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd be very, very comfortable with giving 50 mm. and saying there's another 20 based on when he's got this amount of England caps, whatever. But mm. ultimately, I'd also be comfortable with us just walking away and saying yeah. it's not, it doesn't work. And I think the problem at the moment is it's two weeks since the first bid, I think, maybe even a little bit more than that. And mm. it's sort of like, it's almost as if United are waiting to June the 30th in case Everton do need to do some business. And <laughs> yeah, then we're watching Everton doing these weird deals and it's not just Everton. And look, mm. they're not committing a crime. Nope. Um, it's just another example. It's only one League. deal. It's only one deal. I mean, but, Godfrey but, to Atalanta, he, he's had interest from Italy all, all season, Dob- last season. So. Dobbin, you've Dobbin, sold to Villa. Dobbin went to Villa, but we yeah. we got a player who we've wanted for, and been watching for six months in Irabun. Yeah. And so... Look, the the Dobbin one did come a bit left field, but that's what it's football. It's not as bad as the Villa to Chelsea one for ninety uh, million. Uh, and he's played about five games. Uh, well, there you go. I mean, listen, clubs will do clubs will do what they do, and and these rules are ridiculous anyway. And and obviously, yeah. Sir Jim Ratcliffe's fine on that now since he's gone into Manchester United. There's a lot got a yeah. lot of money and is worth a lot of money. Yet, obviously, you've got to play within within these rules. Newcastle have found the shame and everybody else. So they are. I mean, we know more than anyone with the uh, with the rules last season, with the points deductions and stuff for building a stadium when other clubs have done other stuff, shall we say, and and have, have got European trophies and Premier League titles, and and Everton were punished rather heavily for uh, for building a new stadium. But it is what it is. The rules were there, and Everton went past them, and therefore they were punished. And other clubs will, I'm sure, receive their punishments. But it has created a. The, the June the 30th thing has created this mini mad window. But like you've just said, Mark, it is. They're not breaking rules, but yeah. people don't have to like it, do they? 
No, and I think um, that that's another thing as well. There's, I think there's a bit of needle. I mean, I, I was out last night. I'd had a few to drink and <laughs> obviously said something about Everton. That yeah. was, I think it was about Anana, actually. But like, He's another good player who I think at yeah. Manchester United you do very well at United, but that's a different story. Go on. Yeah, and I don't want to get into another negotiation no. with Everton at, at no. the moment anyway. But we are seeing these like deals going on and they are what they are. Like, you know, if, mm. if, if I was Villa, Everton or Chelsea or Newcastle, I'd be like defending my corner because it's mm. like you are, everyone knows what's happening. I think the, the Villa-Chelsea one is very obvious what's happening there. But the rules that's the Premier League's fault. They've left those sort of grey areas. and But we're, we're, we're seeing this and certain journalists that are close to United are putting it out there. And it's almost like they're going, Everton are getting closer and closer to not having to sell anybody before the 30th. So yeah. it's sort of like we're in this area now where we're just sort of like, well, what's happening with Branthwaite? Like, are we hoping that Everton are going to cave in before the 30th of June? Are we playing a long game until, you know, the back end of this, you know, the transfer window? Mm. Are we walking away? And we have been burnt so many times over. The, I mean, even Harry Maguire, we paid 80 million, <laughs> which I yeah. cannot believe, 190 nope. grand a week and a seven year deal. Good and lady. it took us about two months to do that deal as well. So United fans just do not like the thought of that. Yeah long drawn out deal but i said at the start of the summer i knew branthwaite was a player we were looking at mm. there was a few others and i said if we do go for branthwaite that's the one deal i think will take a while because mm. everton don't have to go and do a, a cheap deal and yeah you know it, it, it could it could run and run and still happen in august mm. um who knows as long as you and, pay the right money <laughs> well yeah i mean i i, I what, for one thing, I don't actually think we've we've genuinely got that. No, budget. no, I we, don't. Either, we yeah. would be we would be throwing most of our budget mm. on Branthwaite, which I don't care how good he is, we just can't no. do that because we we need more than one player. Well, someone like Matthias De Ligt probably represents a better deal, really, for United experience being at huge clubs, only twenty four. He he there and and apparently available for. 35 40 million according to reports out of germany that probably represents better and he's obviously dutch as well go with you know i ten, genuinely um, you know i genuinely out of everyone we want branthwaite and the lad from france were the two i was really happy with you right know, yeah, yeah. provides that you know balance that he can mm. play both center-back positions and yeah yeah Tadebo sort of comes in as a as a Varane replacement. So, mm. yeah, we can... I mean, look, where he's done very well, but yeah. you know, he's probably playing for England where Branthwaite should have been. And yeah. Crystal Palace can now say we want 70 million as well. So course, yeah. there are other options out there. But look, mm. I'd be really happy with Branthwaite. Yeah. So I'm not going to pretend that I don't think he's a good player or anything like that. I just think I, we're, I, it's I a just, difficult summer transfer window for everybody. No, it is. I, I think a lot of Evertonians are just a bit upset. It's not just... Obviously, your videos always get clipped up and put yeah. out, don't they? And everyone sees it. And, and of course, you're defending Manchester United. And we're not going to like what you're saying if you're no, not. That's, that's, that's the but game, that's, that's the that's game isn't it? Yeah, don't yeah. hate the play, hate the game and all that. But I think it's other... It's There's other Manchester United fans as well are like... Everton are being idiots by doing this and Everton are a disgrace for doing this and something's got to happen. And it's like, you have to understand this player is a top, top young talent and therefore Everton are well entitled to demand. It, because what Manchester United might value Jared Branthwaite at might not necessarily, well, probably isn't and clearly isn't what Everton value him at. And it's the value to that that club isn't it we've seen this yeah. before with Everton tried to get Wilfred Nonto last summer and Leeds wanted 30 million for him and Everton well Everton didn't have the money for a start but Everton were like well our valuations around 20 25 maximum yeah. we didn't get him because we we couldn't simply couldn't afford them and Leeds said well this is how much it has. It's happened to Everton in the past with Wilfred Zaha. Crystal Palace wanted 85 million for him and Everton went to 60 and we're like, we can't afford that. Yeah. And, and he ended up staying. So I don't, I you know, Man United doing it probably now with Rashford maybe. I've seen today people saying they should accept 50 and be done with it. But why? Yeah, if Manchester can't... United say he's on a long contract, He's still only 26. We want 80 million for him. That's up to Manchester United. That's their valuation of the player. So that's where I think. So, and listen, that's what social media is for, isn't it? It's for the ba you know back and forth and this that. But with Brandway, just to interject, with yeah, Brandway, go you've got a player that you know is young, played well, mm. ingrained in the club. Fans like him. Yeah, you know, if he's there next year, he's going to have a better season than last year because he's in them developmental years. Yeah. So. I get 
the Everton side, I don't yeah. get it because I don't live it. So, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, Everton yeah. fans getting annoyed by my clips, I understand because they're living Everton the way we're living Man United. And of course. Be biased. Yeah. But with Rashford, I actually think I understand why people might go, let's take 60. For me, 75 yeah. is as low as I would go. But right, then yeah. I look at it and go, he's had two bad seasons out of three. Mm. He doesn't look engaged on the pitch last year. He's... Um, you know, he's clearly not happy. He's on a massive, massive wage that yeah. is causing us huge issues. He's like three, three fifty grand a week. Wow. So you might just go, you know what? I will take about 10, 15, 20 million below to remove some a player that, you know, has had a few problems. But yeah. that's not the situation. Everton aren't desperate to sell Brandway, are they? That's no. what I'm saying. No, that's it. And like, listen, that's that's where we are right now. And just wanted to get your perspective on it, Mark. Because I know, like I say, clips can be clip down and it's not part of the bigger conversation but you also I get you also fight Manchester United's corner I wanted to fight our corner a little bit we value them very highly we don't have to sell them now um, which I think is a big help to Everton of course it is I think if nobody else would have you know would have been sold then we might have been having a very different conversation and listen you write it there's nothing to say that we won't be having this conversation in August when he, you know, the clubs have agreed the deal if Manchester United pay kind of whatever they're asking. But I think everybody, certainly from our side, and I think I include the player in this, everybody's comfortable enough that if he remains, we'll all be fine and we'll all move on. And I personally think as a defender, he's got more potential than John Stones. And John Stones mm. went for 50 million in 2016, you know, we're eight years on. John Stones yeah. is fabulous, don't get me wrong. I think John Stones, tremendous footballer. I always thought he was a better number six than he is a centre back, but I think he's tremendous. He's proved that he's won everything. Fabulous player and has been amazing. Um, but I do think, just in a pure defensive capacity, I think Jared Brantwaite's got the potential to be better than John Stones from a defensive perspective. I don't think he could go and sit in midfield the way John Stones doesn't be as effective, but I rate him that highly at the moment. I think a lot of Evertonians do, and that's why we are sort of um, very bullish about valuations on players. And, and of course, we remember when David Moyes went off to Man United and lowballed us with Leighton Baines and, and Maraman Fellaini. We've got long memories, Mark. We haven't forgot that Still one. Still overpaid either. for Fellaini, though, didn't we? I'm sure there was a £15 million pound Oh, I don't know, Fellaini. I don't know, right for you. Yeah, yeah he did. All right. I, I he didn't, was okay. I, I didn't necessarily rate him, but I think. Yeah. Yeah, going back. No, I, I agree yeah. with the Stones thing. That's what yeah. I've been saying on the United Stand because we mm. get a lot of people going. It's just another Harry Maguire, and I think that that's only going to frustrate Everton fans when they hear that. Yeah. You know, when they hear, oh, he's just another Harry Maguire overpaid yeah. at eighty million. Because I, I think you're absolutely spot on. I think the John Stones thing is far more suitable to Brandway, mm. and and it's just you know. I understand why some United fans do it because we had our fingers burnt badly on many oh, deals. But, but you can't just go 80 million Parry Maguire is the same as, you know, 60 million or 70 million for Branthwaite. They're yeah. very different players for a start and, and also very different ages. I mean, I think Harry Maguire we bought at 25. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and John Stone's a bit, uh, uh, Jared Branthwaite is a bit younger than that. But mm. I think it's where, 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 where frustration resides is un uncertainty. And yeah. from everybody's point of view, mm. if he's not coming, you want to sort of get that David Ornstein drop tonight saying yeah. Jared Branthwaite staying at Everton, officially deal over, and everyone just moves on. I don't think there would be any resentment on any party then. It would just be no. like we couldn't do a deal. But yeah, the it media haven't helped it, Mark, have they? Because they have, some have led, you know, like you said, very early on in this, and we will finish now, but the media have sort of played their part in saying, oh, Everton will have to sell. It's a fire say, not, you know, it's well, a fire say. Well, personal terms agreed coming out soon. Yeah. It was but really I, weird because I've been doing said this for years, you. and I'm like, I don't. You don't normally get that between two yeah. Premier League clubs. Personal terms agreed coming out as the breaking news. That's not normal. But, but that's close to again, though. That just could be close to representatives saying, "Yeah, we'll get it done." Listen, we don't know, do we? And, and like you've just said, it isn't like the transfer window is Sunday. It's it's the 31st of August. But Manchester United may well choose to to move on if they don't think they can get them then they'll move on to other targets. And, and that might be good for us, you know, because we've mm. got new ownership now. And obviously I think you're going to get some soon is that yeah. our last 10 years has been people see us coming, whether it's Everton, Dortmund, yeah. and they'll go, right. And, mm. and they were getting a lot out of us. And I was saying this the other day with Ineos, they might have to walk away from a brand weight deal because not everyone's just going to go, Ineos are in town, let's let them have players at a reasonable price. Yeah, You've got to walk away from a few to get your reputation that you won't be, you know, taken for a ride. And he might be a player that, we have to miss out on because mm. 
just to draw a line and say we're not going to pay that sort of money anymore set a market down absolutely listen mark thanks so much taking your time out a good chat as yeah, always no, I appreciate it, mate. and uh, we'll speak soon take care mate you too pal thanks for having thanks me thanks a on. lot cheers man